chapter 9, The Crunch. Or sorry, The Church. I guess those are different. The only church in Castlevania proved to be not only the old-fashioned European cathedral type, but a mighty big one. More than big enough, according to Simon, to fit all of Castlevania's citizens inside. This way, sorry, this way, said Simon, <laughs> gesturing impatiently for Tim to hurry. His footsteps echoed as he entered. The inside was lit by candles. Candles, candles everywhere. More candles, it seemed, than on a thousand birthday cakes combined. Up ahead, Tim could see Simon walking down an aisle. The place smelled of candle wax and age. It all seemed ancient and holy. Tim hurried to catch up with his friend. The echoes of his own footsteps skittered along the floor excitedly without the sound of authority from his friends. Wait up! He called to the hero around, and his voice came back to him from the walls like a choir. Despite his call, Simon was intent upon his goal, the altar. When Simon reached it, he took the handle of his whip and knocked on the wood three times. Almost immediately, a man wearing a gray hooded robe stepped out from the alcove. He walked up to Simon. Yes, my son. I am on a quest, brother. I seek to rid the land of the curse of Dracula. Tim walked up and opened his mouth to make a quip. However, something stilled him. There was something about his place, but especially about... There was something about this place, but especially about this holy man that said, No jokes, please. The monk looked at Simon, and then over to Tim. The monster's evil even penetrates the walls of this church. Yes, indeed. You can help us through, though. Indeed, I shall do what I can, the monk said solemnly. His hand reached back, and he took off his hood. His eyes fairly sparkled with good humor, but the frown on his face showed that he knew how well, he knew how well the serious the situation was. We are having a white elephant sale. What? We are having a white elephant sale of certain items to benefit charity. Have you sufficient coin that you can buy these things? Oh, said Tim. Simon, this must be the part of what Linda was talking about. He, he wants to pass these things along in an indirect manner. Tim rummaged through his pockets and came up with two quarters, a dime, three nickels, and a penny. But by the time he put out his hand to offer the coins, Simon was already tinkling three gold pieces into the outstretched palm of the monk. Thank you, Brother Simon. Sorry. Thank you, Brother Simon. The man turned and retrieved a wooden box from the altar behind him. Your items of purchase are enclosed from our white elephant sale. I've never fucking heard that. The monk handed Simon the box and began to walk away back into the cloisters of the church. Wait, wait, called Tim. What about the puzzle I'm supposed to solve about the next part of our journey? The monk turned around and gazed at Tim quizzically. Oh, you mean the part about where to find Dracula's rib? Tim was astounded. Shh, he said. This is all supposed to be hush-hush. The rib, the rib, my friend, would be at Berkeley Mansion. You just leave to the right from here, he gestured, and take Bulgaria Road straight onto Jova Woods. Now be forewarned, the paths are very confusing there, but I'm sure you'll muddle through. Tim's mouth had dropped. But, but, but what about, I mean, Dracula might hear you! The monk shrugged. I'll take my chances. With that, the monk left them. Well, there's a brave fellow for you, said Simon. Now let's see what we've got in this box, shall we? He set it down onto a pew and opened the lid. Tim was still overwhelmed by the monk. Wow, what a guy! Too bad the rest of Castlevanians aren't as brave as he is. The rest of the Castlevanians don't have the trappings of a church to protect them. They're out in the middle of the darkness. Simon pulled out a large flask. Excellent. Look at what we have here, Tim. Great. A canteen of water, said Tim sarcastically. Ah, but not just any water, said Simon, holding the flask reverently. Holy water. Well, that's all very well and good, but what does it do? Simon seemed baffled by that one. We shall just have to find out, won't we? What else? Simon retrieved... <laughs> Simon retrieved two whips. Tim recognized them immediately. They were thorn whips. Long, beautifully crafted thorn whips. Excellent, said Simon. The battles with the ghouls damaged my other whip. Now I have a new one. And you have another weapon if you care to try it. 
Well, I suppose I could try, said Tim. Still, I'm getting pretty good with this sword, huh? Simon said nothing. Okay, okay, but I am getting better, aren't I? Simon raised an eyebrow. Tim held his hand. Just how do you snap one of these babies anyways? Tim gave him the whip. It takes practice, Timothy. Practice. <coughs> practice, Timothy, practice. You keep on doing it, and that's the way you do it correctly. This is one of the lessons that your video games have taught you, is it not? Could you win the games when you first tried them? Nope. But this is different. They were fun. Simon looked his friend right in the eye. All of life is not fun, Timothy Bradley. If you learn nothing else from this adventure, then you should learn that. So what else do we have here? Simon reached in, grabbed something, and lifted it out. First, Tim thought it was a diamond. And if it was a diamond, it was the biggest that Tim had ever seen. But then he saw it wasn't a diamond. Although it was mostly white, it had streaks of red in it. Tim had never seen anything at all like that in a diamond. It's some sort of crystal, he said in a wonder, even as it sparkled and shone like a fireworks display. Yes, said Simon. And if my hunch is correct, then not only is it a magic crystal... Simon took a deep breath, exhaling a weariness with the weight of a whole dimension on his shoulders. It is the key to finding Dracula's rib in Berkeley's mansion. And I don't suppose you mean the barbecue type, do you? Simon looked at Tim with total confusion. Never mind, dumb joke. You should try to be more serious, Timothy. Hey, it was my drum jokes that drove Dracula off, wasn't it? True, but you lack a certain gravity in your character. Well, I don't feel like I'm going to float away, if that's what you mean. This shall be one of my missions on this quest, said Simon. I shall make you a more serious young man. I'm going to make a man out of you. And I... And I, said Tim, will make you have a good laugh or two. Simon grunted. We'll see. He turned and started marching off to the ba back to the exit of the church. Tim tried his thorn whip. All he managed to do was knock over a bunch of candles into a baptismal font. Their flames hissed out. Oh, said the voice of the brother, echoing with sarcasm through the church. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Tim wound the rip whip back up, grabbed his sautchel, and raced after Simon. Thus ending chapter 9.